There is a sense of power, now that you're here, laying unconscious beneath me, my body pressing down on yours, the light puffs of your exhales against my neck, your gentle curves pressed against my body in all the ways I have only imagined so far. The warmth of your body seeps into me, and the scent of you fills my nose. My breathing speeds up at our bodies being entangled this way. Fuck. I'm sliding my hand to your shirt before I can help myself, my lips brushing down your jawline and along your throat until I meet the curvature of your neck and shoulder. Mm -hmm. You feel amazing. I feel your pulse fluttering across my lips, and it takes everything within me not to open my jaws as wide as they'll go and bite down on the softness that is you. I want to see my teeth leaving marks across your skin, showing others who you belong to, who owns you. I want you. I want to possess you. I can't be this close to you. You wouldn't want me pressing myself against you and laying on your unconscious body. I am not at all against the idea of being intimate with you, and I intend to, but I have an end game, and that requires your utter obedience and trusts. You would react negatively to me engaging in that activity with you at this very moment while you're unconscious. And I need to keep damage to a minimum. So, I will restrain myself. I allow myself another moment. Inhaling your scent. Letting my fingers grip the flesh of your waists before I push myself up and off you. <sighs> hmm. I have to adjust myself against the stiff fabric of my jeans as it sits unnaturally against the zipper. Just from that brief moment of contact with you, the nearly violent pulsation of certain parts of my body shows the hold you have over me. The things you do to me. F fuck. I hadn't wanted to knock you out. I hadn't wanted to do that. You made me. You made me. You forced my hand. You forced me. You infuriate me at times, my sweet love. Do you know that? Do you know how maddening you are? How infuriating you are? But I love you. You are so pure and so clean, and you are the only real thing in my life. Living in a black and white world, you are the only color. You being you spills warmth and color across the pages that are me with a vibrance that I can't control. I was so full of hate that there was no room for color. No space within me for such feelings of love, pity, or kindness. Honor or decency, I have all the typical characteristics of a human being. Flesh, blood, skin, hair, teeth, but not a single clear emotion. Except for disgust and greed. That was until I fell for you.
You brought on feelings that I never felt before. And they are distracting. You are distracting. You have completely derailed my train of thought at the damn station. I am in a situation that I didn't expect to be, didn't want to be. I could have kept you in the dark for so much longer. I am abruptly no longer in control. And I am fucking seething. I feel absolutely deadly. Lethal. Feral. On the verge of frenzy. I can feel my mask of sanity slipping. Everything happened so quickly. There is a possibility you didn't know that I was the attacker. I made eye contact with you as I punched you in the jaw, though. You have that glass jaw, my sweet love. You are so fragile. No matter how much I want to be able to skim over this, to believe that you didn't see me, didn't know it was me, it's not possible. The mask and the cap won't hide my eyes or my build. You're a smart woman. I have some items in my car, but I tend not to keep a kit on me or in my car as other serial killers occasionally do. It's stupid shit like that that gets you caught. I have to kill you. You can't leave here alive. My logical mind knows that this is the answer. That I have to erase my existence from your life while erasing you at the same time. If it gets traced back to me, and it would, everyone knows. The partner is always investigated heavily. It would be best if you weren't here to tell them who had broken in. I had made my stance as your partner known because I hadn't intended for anything like this to happen. My DNA is all over the goddamned apartment. This has escalated much too fast for me to rein it in now. I am in a bad fucking situation and I know it. It would end my entire life and would obliterate the very intricately woven human mask that I've created for myself. I am a well-known man of my community. I volunteer at the local soup kitchen. I attend church. I help old ladies cross the street, not out of wanting to help, but out of a faked moral obligation that makes me appear like a caring, empathetic individual to those around me. I am not real. I am not human. Although I have this flesh suit that can mimic most human behaviors, I am only an entity. The meat suit is simply illusory. I am not actually here. I have not craved anything outside of destruction and pain until you. Why did you have to do this? Why did you have to come home early? You ruined everything. This is all your fault. All your fault. I hate the things you do to me. Hate. 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 I hate the way you make me feel. But not enough. I don't hate it enough. I should hate it more. But you thrill me in ways I didn't understand. I am about to go against my logical brain and do something stupid. I suppose this is what they meant when they said, Love makes people do crazy things. I don't know how long you'll be cautious. I accept the fact that I have to move quickly and the entire plan will have to change. I want this to be a controlled situation. 
I dislike having to change my plans. I want to move forward with our relationship while keeping you in the dark about my activities. Everything about this is not what I want, and yet I am left with little choice. <sighs> Looks like you're coming home with me. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Love. Forget the lock. We don't have time to be touching other things and dragging this out. This has to be done quickly. And even still, in a world of surveillance cameras, doorbell cameras, dash cam cameras, I am so fucked. I know it. It is much too sunny, and this is much too obvious. I know. I know. I know. I know. Broad fucking daylight, my sweet love. The things I do for you. The insane fucking things I do for you. I'm almost there. Almost to my car. I won't be able to relax until you are in my home and I have the situation back under control. At this point, I am fully aware that the control is an illusion. Just around the corner, straight a little longer and right into a small parking lot and we're there we're so close less than jesus people confused looking people two two confused looking people an elderly couple a woman and a man elderly people talk they talk so much the elderly are idle people idle 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 <laughs> Kill them. Kill them now. The monster within me lunges forward and I have to strangle it down. I have to remind myself that this is broad daylight. I am not used to working when there are no shadows. This goes against the very grain of my pattern, my routine, my... I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. My girlfriend fell and hit her head while we decorating the shelves in our room. She hit her head and won't wake up. I'm rushing her to the hospital. I hope those few sentences were enough. I change my brisk pace to a fast jog. Keep moving. There isn't time to stop. After all, I am your boyfriend. They don't really need to know the rest. As around the last corner, I glance back and they have continued walking and rounding the corner out of sight. They look a little frazzled, but convinced. I jostle you around as I grab my keys from my pocket. I press the button for the trunk. As it's opening, you begin to stir in my arms. It briefly makes me think of you waking up in the morning next to me after a long night of fucking. The smell of sleepy you. With your bent head all must and naked from marathon of physical fun with me the night before. You truly do tickle me in certain places, love. But now is not the time for my imagination to be wandering. Focus, focus, focus. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I hold you tighter. Afraid you'll wake up and begin to fight me. Scream and throw a fit. I reach the rear of my car. The open trunk looking like the maw of a starving animal. And I shove you in. I don't have time to be gentle. I'm sorry, my sweet love. I reach into my back pocket and pull out my knife. Your eyes are opening. The aggressive movement seemed to have woken you up. <laughs> there is a dazed look on your face that quickly changes into one of fear. I reach up. Grabbing the release of the safety cord at the trunk as I begin to saw it through. It's a thin wire, but my blade is sharp and well cared for. <sighs> I am struggling with it, and you are nearly fully awake and starting to move. The safety cord finally comes free. I am leaning in and close to your face. I pull down my mask so you can see my face and clearly see my lips. Your eyes widen in recognition and you look absolutely stunned. Don't make a sound or I will kill you. Do you understand? Do you understand me? 
there are tears in your eyes already. But you give me the smallest of nods, and that is all I need. <sighs> I have to take a moment. My heart is slamming against my sternum, and it feels like it's pressing against my actual vocal cords, trying to escape the cage of my ribs straight out of my mouth. <sighs> I look around, and everything looks so peaceful. It is not at all what I feel like it should be. I was living in my own world of chaos, but now there is nothing. A quiet, empty neighborhood. Kids are not out of school, and people haven't even gotten off work yet. No nefarious things are happening, no random bystander staring at me from a distance or from within their car nearby. And you make no noise in the trunk. You are surprisingly obedient for someone who was just kidnapped. Hmm. When you were in your apartment, when I saw you knocked unconscious, after all that, when you looked up at me just now, from your place in the trunk. I saw it in your eyes. I understand now. <sighs> you hadn't known it was me. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs>